In this session we're going to take a closer look at combining vectors and we're going to do it in the context of looking at forces. So when we've got multiple forces acting on a body, how we can work out the resultant force acting on that body when they're all going at different angles. Or um, if we've got a couple of forces acting on a body and one of them is unknown but we know the body is in equilibrium, and how can we work out what that force is? So, a quick reminder of what equilibrium is, which we'll, we mentioned when we were talking about Newton's first law in the Newton's Laws video. Um, so, ec for a body to be in equilibrium, the net vertical force and the net horizontal force must all be zero. Um, so, we can see here, Newton's second law said that sigma f is ma. And if we want A to be zero, i.e. the body not moving anywhere, nothing accelerating anywhere, then that means sigma F has to be zero. And that means both independently that the horizontal forces must sum up to zero and the vertical forces must sum up to zero. So what I want to do is work through two quick examples. In the first one, we're going to have a body with three forces on them. And we're going to know that it's at equilibrium, but one of the forces is unknown. So we're going to balance the forces, we're going to assert that the forces are balanced and work out what the unknown force is. Then we'll do another one with a couple of forces, and this time um, it's not going to be in equilibrium, but we're going to find out what the resultant force acting on the body is. So, we'll start nice and simple for our first one. Let's say uh, we've got some point here, and it's got force coming out like this, and that's 6 newtons, and it's um, acting at 30 degrees. So this angle here is 30 degrees. And we'll have an object suspended from it. And this object is going to have some weight, um, so it'll have some force associated with its mass that's pulling it down. And then we'll have another force coming out here. So imagine this is two bits of string, one along here, one along here. This will have a force pulling this way, and then we've got the weight of it hanging down here. So it's like we've hooked it over this bit of string, this bit's horizontal, this bit's at an angle. And um, Actually, in this case, we, um, we can find both of these forces from what we've got here. So if we assert this is an equilibrium, then the sum of the forces must be zero. And that means that the sum of the horizontal forces is zero, and the sum of the vertical forces must be zero. Now, let me label up these forces. Let's go A and B here and we'll leave this one labelled as W. Um, now B acts entirely horizontally and W acts entirely vertically. So if we wanted to find the horizontal components of B, um, then that must be balanced by the horizontal component of A because there's no horizontal component to W. Similarly, because B doesn't act vertically, then W must be equal to the vertical component of A in order for everything to be balanced. So let's find the vertical and horizontal components of A. We'll start with the vertical. And the vertical component is going to be 6 times sine of the 30 degrees. And that's going to come out as actually exactly 3 newtons. Then the horizontal component of A is going to be 6 times the cosine of 30, in this case, which comes out as 5.2 newtons. So B, we said, is going to be equal to the horizontal component of A, so we're saying our horizontal forces are all uh, summing up to zero, so that means the horizontal component of A plus our B is going to be equal to zero. And so that means B going to be equal to minus the horizontal component of A. 
which is minus 5.2. And this minus sign just tells us that it's acting in the opposite direction to the horizontal component of A. So this A is acting to the right, so B must be acting to the left to balance it. And we'll see something similar when we look vertically. So vertically, uh, the horizontal component of A plus the weight of this object pulling down must equal zero. So we're balancing the forces vertically, we're in equilibrium vertically as well. And so that means that W is going to be minus the vertical component of A to give us 3 newtons, which will be minus 3 newtons. So acting downwards with A acting. So that's a really simple example where we had two of the forces acting along uh, either the vertical or the horizontal plane. So let's clear this off and have a look at a slightly more complicated example. Let's stick to three forces, um, but we'll have them acting in uh, slightly less convenient directions. Maybe we'll still have one going vertical. So, but this time we'll know all of them, we'll know all the forces and we're going to want to find the resultant. So we start off with some point, we'll have one of our forces acting downwards, we'll label that A, and let's have a couple of forces acting like so. We'll have B and we'll have C. We'll have B acting, let's go 30 degrees above the horizontal again, because that's a nice round number. And C will go 45 degrees above the horizontal. But clearly this isn't a scale. And uh, let's set these to be 3, 4, and 5 newtons. So A is 3 newtons, B is 5 newtons, C is 4 newtons. And we want to find the resultant. So the first thing we need to do, step one, is going to be establish a coordinate system. So before, in the previous example, we saw uh, we had left to be negative, right to be positive, we had up positive and down negative. So we're going to do something similar here. We're going to have up to be positive, and we're going to have right to be positive, which makes down negative, which makes left negative. So when we're looking at these forces, for example, when we work out the horizontal component of C, that's going to be acting to the left, and so that will be negative, whereas the horizontal component of B acts to the right, and so that will be positive instead of negative. Um, so the next thing to do, if we want to find the resultant force, rather than trying to combine these vectors at weird angles, we're going to break it apart into the vertical and horizontal components, sum those up, and then combine the resultant vertical and resultant horizontal component as we've done previously when looking at perpendicular vectors that we were combining. So next up, let's make a little table. We'll take uh, two columns in our table to find the vertical and the horizontal component of each force, and then we'll list each force, A, B, and C, and we'll fill in this table. Then to find the overall vertical and the overall horizontal, all we need to do is sum each column. So, A, we can see it acts purely vertically, and it acts downwards. So the vertical component of A is going to be minus 3. The horizontal component of A is going to be nothing. This is all in newtons. Uh, for B, the horizontal component is going to be 5 times the sine of 30, uh, sorry, the cos of 30, 5 times the cos of 30, and that gives us 4.33 newtons. So we've got our horizontal component of B, 4.33 newtons, and the vertical component is going to be 5 times the sine of 30, and that comes out as 2.5 uh, newtons. Uh, then for C, because that's at 45 degrees, which is exactly half a 90, the vertical and horizontal components will actually come out equivalent. One's going to be cos of 45, the other's going to be sine of 45, 
and you'll see, you can punch it into your calculator if you don't believe me, that those come out exactly the same. You can uh, consider we've basically split the 90 degrees in half, and so you can see by the symmetry there, it's clearly going to be equivalent. So when we put that in, we get a value of 2.82 newtons in each. But we said that because it's acting towards the left, our horizontal component is going to take a negative value. So we'll just slip a little minus sign in there. But it is acting, the vertical component is upwards, and so that's going to retain a positive uh, sign. So now we just need to sum each of these up. We sum this up, and we get a total of 2.32 newtons. So we can see that's positive. So the net force acting on this point is acting upwards at 2.32 newtons. And horizontally, we've got 1.5 one newtons. And so again that's positive so we can see the net force is acting to the right. So if we sketch our net horizontal and net vertical in a little triangle, so we'll start with the horizontal which is acting right at 1.51 newtons, then we've got the vertical which we can see is acting upwards at 2.32 newtons, then now we can describe our resultant force as a single vector rather than its horizontal and its vertical components, and that's going to be this line. So we can describe it by finding its magnitude through Pythagoras, and by describing this angle here so that we've described its direction. So for Pythagoras, we're going to take our vertical and our horizontal components, each squared, sum that up, and take the square root. If you punch that into a calculator, you'll find you get two point seven seven newtons and to find this angle we've got the opposite uh, is our vertical and the adjacent is our horizontal so we will have tan of theta is our vertical over our horizontal so theta is going to be the inverse tan of our vertical over our horizontal and that comes out as 56.8 degrees. So we've been able to find the resultant force of these three. So we started off by setting up a coordinate system, then we looked at each force individually, and we said, what's the vertical component, what's the horizontal component, taking care with the signs. Once we'd done that, we were able to sum them up, sketch ourselves a little triangle with our vertical and our horizontal, find the magnitude through Pythagoras, and find the angle, the direction of this, through a little bit of trigonometry. So this is the resultant force. If we wanted to find what we'd call the equilibrium, so that is the force that would be needed to bring this object into equilibrium, then that's simply going to be the opposite to our resultant force. So it's going to be acting in exactly the opposite direction with the same magnitude. So this would be acting to the left. It would be 56.8 degrees below the horizontal instead of above, and it would have the same magnitude of 2.77. So once we found the resultant, finding the equilibrium, the force needed to bring this object into equilibrium so that it experiences no further acceleration, is simply the exact opposite of that.